mighty, sweet, gracious Father. We come before you because we need help. <clears throat> we've been hurt. We've been told all manner of lies. We don't recognize just how bad off we really are. That's why we are kind of as we are, mediocre, um, lacking potence many times to win souls and fill this place and cause folks who didn't know you to know you and, and see that it's, it's, it's irresistible to walk with you. We failed in so many ways, Lord, but praise God, today we have another chance. You have brought us here with your sweet safety that we might be able to hear a word from on high and we're seeking, we're beseeching that you would come close. No one can bring this word but you. We beg for your Holy Spirit. I know we don't have to beg because you're willing, your eye is on the sparrow and we're worth more, you said, and you're willing. And so we desire to be made whole and so we ask you, will you, will you make us whole? And I know you will say, I will. Be thou clean. And so, Lord, we seek that as we come. I just pray for each person that's here, that their minds could be arrested to your sweetness, to your love, as we come together in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. I don't know if we got the uh, situation to work there. Oh, goody gumdrops. I asked this question earlier. And I'm going to ask you all, and you know, it says we're not supposed to do a bunch of sermonizing, right? So we can study the word together, amen? amen. And the faces that look so rough, can you just smile a little bit? Gives me a little encouragement along the way, saints, amen? amen. All right. <clears throat> you know, I always, I tend to say um, Disneyland should not have the title of the happiest place on earth. Amen? Amen. So, you know, when we come here, we ought, to, we ought to be rejoicing. That's why our children don't want to be here, because we don't make it a joy. I don't mean we have to flip over a pew to be happy. I mean it should radiate from our countenance, amen? amen. Well, he's been good to me, so I'm going to smile. All right, so <clears throat> really quickly, what lies are told in this world? I heard some this morning. Let me see if some other brains can bring me some, some lies. What, who's telling the lies, and where are we getting the lies from? I heard the media, that was this morning. Let me see if I get anything new. Ourselves, mm, that's huge. Mm -hmm. Government, yes. From our doctors, yes. Oh, well, I shouldn't say yes. Um, that's an interesting thought. Uh-huh, uh, any others? What was that? The spirits? Evil spirits, whether it be in liquor, whether it be in media, whether it be from ourselves possessed and don't even realize it, or at least oppressed, right? When Jesus was on the scene, he got rid of a whole lot of demons in the church. You remember that? That was interesting to me. Anyhow, so what tells the lies in this world? And have you heard them? Have you all heard lies? So you did hear it from the news? Some from doctors? Okay, you're nodding your head, okay. All right, okay. Let's go to Jeremiah 17, nine. I think you could probably tell me this by heart. Let's read it together. Jeremiah 17, nine says, are we there? Jeremiah 17, nine. Ready, let's read together. The heart is deceitful above what? Wow, and desperately wicked. Who can what? Wait a minute, the heart is deceitful about how many things? So Satan has nothing on your heart. Are you serious? Do you recognize what Satan really did? Satan actually in the Garden of Eden studied out the best animal he could pick to destroy man. That's pretty sneaky, wouldn't you say? Yet, you're telling me that in all these 6,000 years that he's had the ability to search out your biochemistry and know how to mess you up because he was able to mess up your mom and your mama's mom and all them. You mean to tell me your heart is worse than him? Let me read that again to make sure. The word says the heart is deceitful above all, desperately wicked. Okay. 
All right, how in the world can that happen? There's a saying that says, and I, I, I think it's Orwell, George Orwell, I hope I get it right. In an age of universal deceit, telling the truth, does anyone remember, is a revolutionary act. I'm just gonna say that one more time because it needs to sink into our ears. In an age of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. Could he really tell Adam, when Adam was eating the fruit, could he really tell how bad his heart had gotten? No, no, he couldn't know it was that deceitful, could he? So when I was reflecting last evening, yesterday night, on this topic, as I was doing this, trying to come up, Lord, what would you have me to say to the people? While I was trying to reflect on that question, another thought came in. You think it was a thought that led me to understand what it was? No, the devil threw in what? An unrelated thought and tried to thwart this message today. There is a, there is a real enemy who has a real tool in us to destroy us. We're talking about abuse today, right? This morning we talked about the abuse of males without them even really knowing it. Huh? To mess up their testosterone, those who miss that, if you want to find out how to help your testosterone, come and find out. Amen? Amen? All right? So he threw this unrelated thought because he wanted to destroy this. He used my own heart to destroy this message, right? Or to try to. Uh, God forbid that that should happen. So Adam ate. When he ate this fruit, as he was eating this fruit, a very strange power started to come over him. Really strange. It was a power that was completely opposite to God. Did you hear that? Completely opposite to God. And I just want to say before I go on, I really appreciated everything that happened this morning. The, was that the nugget? That was lots of fun. Thank you so much, uh, the young lady who did that. And just the story, everything was such a blessing. So I just want to praise the Lord for that. Uh, and so it says uh, a complete, uh, a, a strange power opposite, completely opposite to that of God. So what is God? John, 1 John 4, 8. Let's read it. What is God? I agree. Let's read it. 1 John 4, 8. All right. And 1 John 4, 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is so Whatever this power was, it was not what? Love. It was not love. Okay. So the greatest expression of love is what? If you don't know it, go with me to John. John chapter 15, verse 13. John chapter 15, verse 13. You know, I'm thankful for this word. Soon from now, we're not going to have it. And it would do us well to, to uh, memorize this. John chapter 15, verse 13. Would you read it with me? It says... Greater love hath what? No man than this, than a man lay down his life for his. So God is love, and the greatest expression is that you would lay down your life for your friend. That's the highest you can get in love. So what could be this power that was overtaking as he ate? What was the power? You said it. Amen. Let's go to uh, John chapter 8, verse thirty. Four, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 34. <clears throat> Jesus answered them, verily, that means surely, yes, yes, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the what? Sin is an entity. And you end up, as soon as you eat, the fruit and lose your mind, you become his servant or its servant. That is very deep, okay? Um, you, you can't like say, I'm not gonna do that. You become a servant. Has anyone here been a servant? You have? Oh, praise the Lord. Were you treated well by your master? Did you call him master? 
Why not? You weren't a real servant then. All right, I'm going to say it this way. You became a slave when you ate that fruit. Now, some of us know what it is to be a slave. I wasn't one of them. I was born after the time. Amen? Praise the Lord. Um, But we become a servant of sin. The power that came over him, I heard, was complete. Note, note, and it's complete selfishness. Okay? Complete selfishness. All right. So, selflessness says the greatest manifestation is I will die for my friend. But sin and selfishness says what? Yeah, I'm going to kill to gain. I'm going to kill to gain. I'm going to kill to gain. All right, so it says, thou shalt not kill. In the original language, that means thou shalt not murder. Does anyone know the difference between murder and kill? Yes, please. Kill, say it again. I, I couldn't hear you. When you kill someone, murder is when you kill someone intentionally. And killing is just not so intentional. Okay, anyone else? A good try. Anyone else? In the original, it says, thou shalt not murder. Okay? So to murder is to kill without due cause. Okay? Like you said, killing is just, can happen any which way, right? Accident, all the different things. So to murder, so in the Ten Commandments, it's thou shalt not murder. Kill without cause. Did God kill sometimes? Why? Because if it had left them alive, it would have been worse for the rest of the people. Did you know that those people um, before the flood, these people lived 930 years on average, and they perfected evil. Catch that? 900, nine centuries of perfection. Of, and these brothers are 15 to 18 feet tall. When they wanted a sister, they didn't say, oh, I wonder if I could ask that dear man who's her husband if I could have her. What do you think he did? If I'm stronger, I'm going to beat you down and I'm going to take her. Okay? That's how bad it had gotten. So, <clears throat> yeah. Thou shalt not murder. Had he left them, we wouldn't have survived to this day to see the plan pan out. It wouldn't have happened. Okay? So this is very deep. So now, thou shalt not kill. I think of Hollywood stars. Does Satan like the people who who he uses to destroy others. So tell me, how did some of these people die? Tell me, how did Jimi Hendrix die? Anyone know? Drugs. In his own vomit, he died, right? Now let me ask you, what did Jimi Hendrix do to this world? Say it again. He influenced it, seduced it. There was another fellow. Remember a fellow named Barry White? I don't know if anyone knows Barry White. This is way back when. He didn't even sing, really. He just kind of spoke real soft and low <laughs> and seduced the women, right? His music is still seducing women, right? How do these people die? I think of Heavy D. I think of so many different people who went out just recently. Who's the latest that went out? Prince. Have you ever heard some of his lyrics? Who's ever heard Seven. I'm going to say it to you. Oh, seven, and we'll watch them fall. We stand in the way of love and we'll um, control them all with an intellect and a savoir-faire no one in the whole universe could ever compare. What was he saying? Who's the sevens? And who's he trying to shut down? What influence was that before he was changed? Huh? And yet, did the enemy care? He died the same way. Isn't that something? The devil will eat his own. Young people, when you decide to go out, you'll be burnt if you go with him. He's hot. Huh? Careful. I I, I feel sad. It's serious. It's serious. So, what is another characteristic of this power? We said it was deceitful above all things, but what was the other part? There's a desperation in this wickedness. There's a desperation in this wickedness. So, let's look at this. Satan's thoughts are very chilling. Does anyone know where we find his thoughts? 
Come on, scholars. Say it. Let's go. Isaiah 14. I heard it. I love it. We need to be able to prove what we believe. Amen? Let's look at his thoughts for a moment. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14. I believe that starts with verse 12. He had an eye problem. I heard that. All right. If you take the eye out, you can't even get sin, can you? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from the ground, which did what? So his thoughts weaken what? Okay. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into, I will exalt my throne above the, where are you at out there? Above the stars of God, I will sit also where? In the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the, who sits there now? It's not Santa Claus? No Satan claws up there, doesn't he? Isn't he on the sides of the north? In red, with a sleigh, knowing good and evil? Mm, somebody ought to be careful. Anyway, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the? Yet thou will be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So his thoughts are, I need to be the highest. Now, how do you get higher than the most high? This is called insanity, right? So Satan's thoughts are insane and they're chilling because he has to step on you to get there. I'm going to talk about abuse. He has to step on you to get there. All right. All right. And sin is weird. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but it's a weird power. Okay? Keep that in your mind. So in Revelation 17, let's go there. Does anyone know what's in Revelation 17? Tell me about it. What's in Revelation 17? We're studying the Bible together. Give me some vocal cords. What's in Revelation 17? The, the harlot. Yes, the whore of Babylon. All right. And she is, um, she's pretty proud. And uh, her, his, his thoughts started in, I'm going to beat you, God. I will be higher than the angels. And it ends in Babylon, the creation of his masterpiece at the end of time. Does that make sense? Is she an abuser? 1,260 years of pain. She's biding her time for a minute, right? But God's people are getting strengthened as a result, and she will meet. It will be the clash of the titans. Guess who wins this next time? Better believe that. 144,000 strong, right? All right. So Revelation 17, this is the ending thought. Let's go to 18, and let's go to um, this shows who she is and her judgment. But it shows what she's dealing with. Remember, this is his masterpiece now, talking about abuse. So let's go down to, um, mm, let's go down to verse 11, all right? Because the merchants of the earth bind together with her in this masterpiece of the end, um, at the end of time. It says, the merchants of the earth shall what? And mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. So she made them what? Rich through your abuse. You'll see this. She made them rich, and it says, the merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and of pearls, of fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet, and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory keep going down. And then it says, verse 13, and cinnamon. And what? Odors. Did we talk about what odors do to us this morning? Can anyone just give me, what do those odors do? Some of the bath and body works. Some of these things that you read the label, can anyone tell me what it does to your endocrine system? Disrupts it, right? What it does to male uh, children? If you weren't here, you missed it. You want to see those labels. These things are serious. She starts dabbling in the perfumes, right? You got this one thing called CK1. This was way back when. I don't know if you still have it, but what was the whole thing behind that to make male and female the same? Wait a minute. That ought to tell us something. If you're wearing it, be careful. <laughs> Just make sure you keep your gender, all right? All right. The cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine. Interesting. And oil and fine flour. Have we heard what the, what's been happening with our flour? Please, somebody tell me what's been happening with our flour. The wheat flour. This thing is practical. Can anyone tell me what's happening to the wheat that's messing up our brain? It's not GMO'd, but it's highly I hybridized. What were you going to say? 
cytotoxins, yes, when we have it in, 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 in processed foods, that's true. One other thing. Thank you. It is spray, sprayed with Roundup, which has several different things in it, one being glyphosate. What does that do? Did you know some of our wheat? I have an article right now that says that wheat by itself will cause, the, the way it's being made today, it can cause diabetes all by itself. By itself, hear that. It destroys the gut bacteria because that glyphosate is destroyed. You think God didn't know this was coming down the pike? He's telling you the masterpiece. This thing is clear. Listen, <laughs> CNN has nothing on the scriptures. If you study it, it's epic, y'all. It's amazing stuff. So fine flour and wheat and the beasts and the sheep and the horses and the chariots and the slaves and what? That's the last ingredient in her, her stuff right there. The souls of men is what she traffics. Masterpiece of the enemy of souls. Listen, remember there's three angels. If you don't understand the first angel or experience the first angel, you won't be able to understand the second angel and you can't escape the third. Did you know that? That's why it must be received in its order. That first one is what's gonna get us out of this uh, abuse. The first angel's message. It's beautiful, y'all. It's beautiful. All right. So I said that, that his beginning thought was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat you. I'm, this competition and this sports stuff, I'm going to beat you. But his last is, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to shut down the last generation. I'm going to do it through this entity right here, this mixture. All right? All right. So how did it get desperate? How did this sin, this power get so desperate? Once selfishness was conceived from decision to consequence, it wanted to stay alive. Do you understand what that meant? Once it was conceived, how was it conceived? We, as human beings, came, well, at first, we were a perfect person, right? Adam and Eve came to make a perfect decision. When they made that decision, they chose what? Diso. It was a perfect decision. You have the right to choose whatever you want. They were perfect. They made a choice for disobedience, but there was a consequence. The word con means with, the word sequence means set of events as a result of. Does that make sense? Set of events as a result of. So here you have selfishness was chosen, so now there is a consequence. And that consequence wanted to stay alive. Okay? Sin has an end. It knows that. What's the wages of sin? And so he is going to be desperate to stay alive in your heart. That's why it's harder for you to sometimes to surrender to the Lord, right? Okay, his payment, oop, wrong. How did I mess up here? Uh-oh. Oh, good. All right. Now, <clears throat> the problem with this whole thing is that what? The problem is it's a slow death. Remember it says, in dying thou shalt die. That's what that word means. When you die, in dying you shall die. As soon as you start, you'll begin to die. And the abuse that comes as a result of it is so sad. It says the nation's weakening would be methodical. Okay? Catch that. The nation's weakening. So Satan's not just, I'm going to slap you. That's not how he works. He's going to do the worst damage he can what? He can find, right? Uh, right? So he would study man. I hope this can work. Oh, it did. He would study the woman and her needs, and then he would use it against her. You catching that? He would study the child, their needs, and then use it what? Against them. The young brothers, he would study their needs and use it against who? You see that thing right, that fashion right there? What do you think a young man is doing when he's got his pants like that? But what's he looking for? Did he get it at home? Well, that outfit needs to go. And our need for relationship. This would be the greatest one. Do you remember when Adam and Eve ate the fruit? What did they cover? 
degenerative organs. They didn't cover their knuckle nor their knees. And that's what he would use at the end of time. So he was going to dismantle, it's called, synch, uh, let me see if I can get, syncremental, I get that right? Dismantling. And do you know this was actually written down in a manifesto? And did you know for America and, and it's following it? I didn't know it was written down. Interesting order wrote this down, and I have the quotes actually for you in another um, uh, uh, lecture. Unbelievable. It actually says, we will study these out, and we will use it against them to destroy this particular nation. You ever wonder why we're not outlawing um, GMOs, but Africa, uh, Europe, Russia, all these people are getting rid of it? Why America, guys? Why are they fighting so hard? You know who's going to come out of here? The three angels' messages. Who do you think he has to shut down? Our, our health message wasn't given to us just, just because Jesus can write. Nothing to do with that. It is for your very salvation. The weirdness of sin. Now, everyone who knows me knows I'm not a fan of dogs. So I'm going to tell you about the weirdness of sin. So one day I'm walking out the street, and here comes this dog. And he comes barking towards me, look. When he first came, he was 30% bigger to my eyes than when he left. And I kid you not, because he looked so big coming out. I was like, oh, Lord, please help me. <laughs> and I said, and I just said, in the name of Jesus, is all I could do by the time he came. When he came around me and was on his way back, that dog was so small. I said, wait a minute. Did I just, did that just really happen in my brain? The fact that fear made the, 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 the trouble look bigger than it was. I mean, literally the dog was about that big. But he looked, well that I guess 50%, he looked about that big to me and his bark was fierce, you know, <laughs> right? So that was interesting to me that I would notice that and I sat back and I said, Lord, fear is a thing, sin is a thing. There is an interpretation when Adam ate the fruit. It was the interpretation through the lens of Sin and selfishness, which is why our problems and our abuses will be looming larger than they need to be. Okay? That's a problem. It's called false education. What? When we go to school, are we getting a good education? Oops, someone said no. Why? Tell me. Where does it come from? I heard it's a secular education. Where does it come from? Prussia. But I agree, Babylonian, right? And it was taught not to make people know how to think, but what to think, right? So that you would believe in the American what? Dream, go to work for someone else and you'll be free. Go to school, work for someone else and you'll be free. Who's the true free person? Say it again, Saint. I couldn't hear it. Who's, who's truly free in this world? Agreed. But what would they be doing? What's their occupation? Ministering. How? Serving God. That's one. But how? Say it again. Self-sufficient. Do you know that Jeremiah then couldn't believe they, they had to pay water bills to Babylon? Did you know that? That was one of their things. It says, wow, we have to pay for our firewood. Do you pay for your firewood? What's it called? Come on, PG&E I heard, right? And then you had, to, you had to pay for your water, which has 4,000 substances in it that destroy your gut bacteria. But you went and got an education, so you free, right? By the way, it's called a city block. Is that the same as a cell block? Oh, I, won't, I won't go there. I won't, I won't go there because, oh, if you were to go over a prison, and, and you could look over the top of it and their cells, they're like lined up fence to fence, right? Go with me real quick in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 5. Go, I mean, because people really feel that they're free, especially in the city, right? I can, I, I can go to Walmart all day and all night. Listen to this. This is, this is so deep. The Bible is so relevant. Uh, Isaiah chapter 5, starting with verse... Eight. And in my Bible here, it says the six woes upon Israel. 
This is the beginning. Woe unto them that join what? I'm going to stop and wait for you there yet. Amen? All right. Woe unto them that join what? And lay till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. But your houses are the same way. If you looked over at the cell block and the city block looks the same. You wear the same uniform. You listen to the same TV, right? But who's the true free man? The entrepreneur who doesn't have to worry about Sabbath keeping because he's, look, my, my food feeds me right here in the ground. I have water. I have five acres. I have whatever. And you know what? I'm all right. That's what happened in the time of the Great Depression. The people in the city starved. The people in the country did what? They didn't even feel it. It's coming again. Don't get abused the second time. You have warning. Amen? All right. So false education appearing real. This education we've been given, what to think, not how to think, this causes abuse. Because you know what? You know in the bottom of your heart, many of you, many of us, that we never really meet our full what? And then there's this underlying pain as a result. I spoke with a man. This man was in a lifestyle center. And he was having stomach trouble. And I said, he, so he came to me, and I thought, Lord, now how do I, how do I, how, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm no doctor. I can't diagnose. I'm just a simple missionary. I said, what is going on with him? And you know, the Lord gave me a question to ask. And I asked him, I said, let me ask you a question. Are you, did you meet all your goals in life? Are you fulfilled? Immediate, he said, no. I said, do you think that has anything to do with your gut? He looked at me. He said, yeah. I said, so what if we sat down right now and planned the strategy so you could meet this? He said, I'd love that. So we sat down. We planned the strategy. Next day, I said, how's your stomach? He says, A-OK. What? Is that simple? Why abuse yourself any longer? Learn how to think, saints. Amen? All right. So. The problem looms larger when we face the bills. We face the rejection of friends. That is very huge. We face divorce. That's a hard one. In fact, that one is never really recovered from the side of glory until he uh, makes you new. There's a scar with that one. Why? Because the one flesh, it's one, right? You try to tear one flesh, what do you get? You get a scar, a stain. Loss of property, all these things loom large. They seem almost insurmountable. But you know, the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I will draw what? And he said this signifying what kind of death he was going to die, right? Now listen to this. The people answered him, we have heard out of the what? Law. We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth for? And how sayest thou the son of man must be lifted up? So he's saying, you're not, you can't die. The Christ can't die. So who is this son of God? What does the cross have to do with anything? Is the cross empty? In a manner of speaking. But I tell you, the cross is loaded. Righteousness by faith is a subject that this church turned its back on a while ago. And very few people understand it. Did you know righteousness by faith is right thinking? Do you know the, can anyone in about one sentence give me what righteousness by faith is? From your thoughts, anyone, come on, join me. Give me a scripture or something to show me what righteousness by faith is. Because the majority of Christendom does not have it right. One of them believes the law is done away with, I can do anything and be saved as long as I, you know, one time in life I did this and I could murder, I don't care, you know, I'm going to heaven. That's one righteousness by faith because Jesus did it all. Another believes you could do it by works. Wrong. So what's the true righteousness by faith? By beholding you become changed. I like that. Anyone else? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. 33 and a half years he lived. For what? to make every decision that you would need to make on this earth. Hear that? The cross is loaded. It is loaded with the mind and understanding of 
complete wisdom, complete selfishness to stop the abuses in our lives and the children who come after us. Some of the, us have been abused terribly. We can't stop what was done to us, huh? But we can stop what we do to someone else instead of using it as an excuse, amen? All right, so it was loaded with that beautiful mind. 33 and a half years of, let me see if I can help you out here. Let me turn, turn um, the soft answer, turning away wrath. Dealing with hypocrites, whatever way, it was always appropriate. That was loaded onto the cross. And the Bible says in Ezekiel, go with me to Ezekiel chapter 25. Thank you for all of those texts. Our righteousness by faith, I, I'm, I'm blessed by the fact that you all brought that. Ex, uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25. Listen to this. Then will I sprinkle what? Clean water upon you, and ye shall be. So that's the justification. From all your filthiness will I, and from all your idols will I what? A new heart also will I, and a new spirit will I put, and I will take away the stony heart. And I will give you an heart of flesh, last one, and I will put my spirit and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and what? That's why it says, thou shalt not, because those are promises. You shall not deceive someone else, because I live in you. You shall not uh, forget my Sabbath, because I'm going to show you how to keep it. By the way, did you know that if... We would have kept as Adventists the seventh-day Sabbath correctly. There would not have been a Richard Dawkins in this world. Does anyone know who Richard Dawkins is? A foremost atheist. Debates Christians and puts them to shame. He would have never been in this world had Adventists done right. How do you keep the Sabbath right? Obviously, we've failed because we've got a lot of atheists, right? Interesting thought. By the way, the Bible also says that in Deuteronomy, 20, uh, Deuteronomy 4, that had Israel done it, there would not have been an atheist. Did you know it says that in the scriptures? It says that. So this cross is loaded, but I got to do this. What's true in the spiritual is true in the what? So real quickly, I'm going to run through this and end this up. You know what a phenotype is? A genotype and a phenotype. Okay, so a phenotype, you're looking at it. The end result of your genes, what I look like. A phenotype, I'm sorry, a genotype is, is the DNA that says what you would have looked like, right? So when the two mother and father come together, they make this little genotype and the phenotype comes out, all right? A genotype of an airplane is the blueprints. The phenotype is the plane itself, right? The Boeing 747, okay? That's a genotype and a phenotype. If we think our physical, I'm sorry, if we think our physical traits of our physical traits, how we look, there is a direct insight and reflection or projection of our internal health. Does that, does that, is that clear? In other words, the things that are on the outside project how healthy we are on the inside. That clear? All right. And there are going to be a bunch of things that describe that. And I want to show you, um, listen to this one, a hundred, I'm sorry, our body shape and our physiology um, and the function, they link the way we look on the outside to the way our, our brain is functioning. So if you've got certain body types, you could be really missing your brain function. Isn't that deep? They're finding this out now. Um, embryology, the study of how you were developed and how the diseases you're going to get as a result. Very interesting. I just want to show you some of these things. Um, molecular biology and chemistry, looking at the interplay and interactions between DNA and RNA and um, our protein and other functions in the cells very critical to our advancement. Just so you know, some of the things we put into our body actually become, latches onto our cells and creates a whole new entity and our body attacks it. Did you know one of those things? Plastic. They're finding out that it actually goops onto us and creates our uh, white blood cells, fight it and we get autoimmune diseases like alopecia or we forget, all kinds of things. Do you know um, a young lady who I'm working with, um, working with at the other church, she just gave her testimony. I just did, did some cooking classes. She had um, hives when she would eat wheat, because we were talking about the wheat, but she also could, was losing her smelling, had lost her smelling. She gave up wheat not too long ago. Guess what she started doing? Smelling, it was actually odd antibodies against her smell. Another young man, he actually gave up the wheat and began uh, stopped stuttering 
This is how much this stuff is really giving us trouble. Can I tell you where you can find good wheat? Montana wheat. Montana wheat has not been messed with. Isn't that beautiful? You can even find it at Walmart. Isn't that special? Anyway, so there's hope. All right. So just showing you that there's these developments are, are, are really issues. Uh, let me skip down. That's too much stuff. All right. So what you look like on the outside. Okay. So what are the examples? So if you have striations in your nails, you could have what? Zinc deficiency. If you have gums that bleed, you could have high acidity in your mouth, right? By the way, if you have high acidity in your mouth, that's going to make you crave the worst things you, uh, for your body. But if you change the pH in your mouth, you're actually going to want the things that are good for you. Did you know if you took a pound of greens a day, catch that, one pound of greens a day, you would change your pH in your mouth and you would long for the good instead of the bad? The Botenko family, this man, he was... They told the people, listen, uh, we don't want you to change anything in your lifestyle. We just want you to take two green smoothies a day. They did two green smoothies a day. And you know what happened? The man who was smoking called them, please. You told us not to change anything, but I can't smoke another cigarette. It just tastes so bad to me. What? One man says, I'm not giving up my meat. I'm not doing anything. He says, you don't have to. He says, can I put my meat in my smoothie? That's the only way I could do it. He, she says, go ahead. Put the, put the meat in your smoothie. So he made savory soup with his, with, his, with his smoothie. But you know what? He got over diabetes, got over all this stuff, and wanted the good. Why? Because he overcame evil with? And that's what you want to do. So instead of trying to wish so hard you would do right, start taking in the greens, some green smoothies. And before you know it, you're going to want to what? Do right. Psalm 23 is the first angel, and it says the first thing he does is he leads you beside green pastures to look at it and to eat it. Amen? Remember another brother who ate it, and he got his mind back, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, pride got done, right? Even the king of Babylon got saved. Amen? Uh, we, pray, we pray for the king of Babylon today, too. Amen? All right. We have, uh, if we have index fingers that are shorter than our, other, uh, than our ring finger, we may have increased uh, hormones, certain types of hormones like testosterone. If our earlobes are attached um, a different way, our collagen could be different. Our body on the outside directly reflects the health that we have on the inside. Cracked lips. Now, how can we change it? How in the world can we change it in the physical so we can know how to change it in, in the spiritual? It says, now cracked lips may disappear when we increase what? B2, omega-3s. Wow. Our hair may stop falling out if we stop, start doing what? B7 or the fatty acids. By the way, what are the fatty acids? Anyone know the essential fatty acids? Omega-3? Where do we find that? Because we want to make the gospel practical. Where do we find that? Flax seeds. That's right. What else? Walnuts. What else? My favorite. Amen. I call that the... The, what the, uh, my friend calls it the, the fruit of peace. Very, very good. Okay? So very good. Olives, all, all these different places. Okay. Um, our skin may become smooth if we start to normalize our levels of salicylic acid. Our eyes may actually appear to change what? If we what? Detoxify our digestive system. Who's ever heard of Fully Raw Christina? Yes, that girl is gorgeous, right? She, after eight years, catch this, eight years of a raw diet, and I don't believe in being all raw, but she's 100% raw. After eight years, her eyes turned green, blue, and they were dark brown. Yeah. Okay, so if I ever come back here with blue eyes, you know what to do, right? <laughs> Amen. I get a little more raw in the diet. Amen. She's not the only one. This has happened to many people because as you detoxify, the Bible says the light of the, um, the, light of the body is through the... I. You don't have to just leave it to the iridologist to tell the wrong story. The Adventist, the Bible has the right story. Amen? Amen? All right. So we know that as you detoxify, the clarity begins to come up, right? All right. So what's plastic and changeable is our muscles, the sharpness of our vision. Like I said, my mom was able to, now has the eyes of a 16-year-old. She's 75 and no longer wears glasses. More can, um, our waist size, all of those things. If you've ever heard of Annette Larkin, her waist is tiny. She's also pushing 80, and uh, she says she got the tininess of her waist when she went raw. She did not have that. She is, she's gorgeous, okay? These changes. All right, so these are the things that can happen. So if they can happen on the outside, the food we eat, 
our social environments, I don't have time to get into this and what this does, whether we're relaxed or stressed, whether we're happy, whether we're indoors in spaces that are dusty and moldy, these things have something to do with us, whether our climates, their allergens, uh, the various things that we're suffering, whether we exercise or don't exercise, like our job or don't like our job, these things get switched on, they get switched off. So what is God doing? He is omniscient. He understands the dilemma of abuse. He knows that when we are not fulfilled as a people, we hurt other people. Okay? Someone has to be dominated. All right? And it's not going to be us because we don't know love, but he does. And that cross is loaded today. You know, as we consider that we can change the things of the body, we can smooth out our nails. We can take red clover and it will actually make your lips red and your, your cheeks red, and even if you're black, because it did it to me when I was cooking for myself on the road. Sorry, I can't give you that. I'm, I'm, I'm eating from Jamba Juice. So all of these things we can see happen in the physical. Is it true in the spiritual? How does God use the cross to change you? Those promises that are in the Bible, when you come to make every decision in life, he will add to you the healing touch of right doing by the promises. Did you know there's a promise for every um, decision or situation in life? If you had emphysema, what promise would you ask for? It says that he gives life and breath to all. Did you know that? If you had diabetes, what, what, what would you ask for? Is there a promise that you could ask for? Someone help someone out who has diabetes today. What promise could they ask for? Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Saints, we need to learn how God works in us, but we got to know these promises, amen? The cross is loaded. His mind was loaded because he says, thy word have I what? Hid where? Underneath my bed? In my heart that I might not what? If the word is in the heart, sin cannot be there because the seed of God abides in there and he will smash it every time. He saw Satan thrown out the first time. He could throw him out of you too. Is there anybody who wants that? Is there anyone who wants a heart ready for these times that are coming? To stop abusing one another? Listen, the enemy of souls has a masterpiece in, in the wicked one. It's about to come down on us. We have to have a love that can handle whatever comes our way. Only he can do it, for it is God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So if there's anyone today who would like to be ready, come down. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray with you, and I want to be a part of it because I'm going to be one of those Caleb's in this last generation. I plan to run on the mountains as well. I'm getting there or I'm dying trying. Amen? So whoever would like to come, let us pray. We need more than we have. The cross is loaded. When will you grab a hold of what he can give you? Don't let this day pass. The voice will never be louder. But it's always powerful in its ability. And Lord, as these precious ones come down who are seeking a readiness to stop the foolishness of their own hearts and the abuse that they give to one another, or if they have been abused in ways that are deeper than we can understand, than words can convey, the hurt has become a black pit in their soul. Then I pray for them as you begin to take your hand down to that area and touch it and bring it out and dis demolish it and create in them a new heart. I remember a woman who seven demons had to be taken out of. And God says, I, didn't, I haven't given up on you. She's a hero to me. And that woman was his most ardent follower. She, being caught in the act, the last time with this seven demon, caught in the act, recognized a love that didn't want her body, didn't want to take from her her virtue, but just loved her supremely. And it melted her for life. Today we're talking of her story. And I know there's another here. And I pray that you will touch that heart. And allow them to recognize. That you will melt that same bitter unforgiveness. That is destroying them. And you will raise them above their persecutors. So that they themselves can go and give that message. And all could be raised up together. 
it is time that we be a witness. This gospel must be a witness. We've already said it in words, but it's time for demonstration. Help us today. And Lord, as we pray, bless each one. Father in heaven, the power at the cross is more than we understand. It's staggering if we'll allow it. The Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. That word follow means to pursue with all vehemence. If we would just stop, it would bowl us over. If we would just stop. Give us the ability to stop, to love surrender. Work in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. These idols that have hardened us to where we cannot even burst a smile where it's appropriate. Forgive and then Lord come heal put an excellent spirit within us may we be more like the daniels and the jobs and the jesuses and not like us the merits of the blood of jesus is all we can bring for that's all that will go into the heavenly sanctuary and so i ask today that if there is wickedness in our hearts that you would help us in the silence of this moment to give you those things or to give us the strength to throw them out for that's true righteousness by faith not that we're just going to do anything and make it to heaven but that your power can abolish the sin condemn it in the flesh as jesus did at every turn make us victorious make us like joel's army prepare us for the end and may we win family and friends for you said as it was in the days of noah so shall it be in the days of the uh, coming of the son of man and he saved his family Every last one of them went in there. And may our family members be saved as well. We thank you for your mighty works. We look forward to your glorious answer to our desperate need. In Jesus' name, amen.